Sure. Welcome everybody. I'm just now going to talk about, uh, demonstrate you about the post nasal packing. So the thing or a 14 franc size uh, uh, Foley's catheter, an umbilical clamp, a 10 ml syringe, a lax tongue depressor, rapid rhino, and uh, uh, go, uh, tape with us. So to start with, uh, this should be done only if the bleeding is not controlled even after antenasal packing or if there is any suspicion of posterior bleed. So after getting uh, consent from the patient, uh, first we have to make the uh, uh, Foley's catheter well lubricated with the lube. So I had applied generously much of the uh, lubricant on my uh, catheter. So I'm applying some more now. So after applying the lubricant very well, now we have to uh, go along the floor of the nasal cavity. So again, I will demonstrate the direction. You should not go like this. We have to go along the floor of the nasal cavity like this. So now I'm going to gently introduce the Foley's catheter. So while introducing, we should also have a lax tongue depressor and we should ask the patient to open the mouth. We have to depress the tongue and have a look into the, yeah, and we have a look into the post uh, posterior pharynx and we have to keep introducing the uh, Foley's catheter until we get a view of the bulb of the Foley's catheter there. So we should look at the bulb and then we should slowly inflate the Foley's catheter at least 15 ml and we should be very careful because yeah so here we are inflating the balloon and it gives pressure in the posterior nasal pharynx so while inflating the balloon we have to look uh, for the uvula to get whether it's getting blanched or not if it is getting blanched there is a chance of necrosis we should reduce the pressure and after that we should gently pull the Foley's catheter a little bit superiorly according to the tension. So in this case, it is there is more tension. I can decrease some air on the patients. So I'm reducing a little bit of air so that it goes into the post-nasal space. So I'm just pulling it up again until it goes into the post-nasal space and we we'll leave it there and we also look at the uh, uvula for blanching. So once we have done the post-nasal packing, before uh, securing the post nasal pack, we also have to do anti nasal packing. So I will take the rapid rhino and gently introduce along the sides of the post nasal pack. Again, it should be generously lubricated and then slowly push all along parallel to the post nasal space. And now we have to secure the post nasal uh, pack with the umbilical clamp. We have to gently place it just above the nostril and we should ideally keep some gauze in between the clamp and the uh, nostril so that there is no pressure necrosis over the L of the nostrils and then clamp it that way and then fix all of them together. So if you put some air in the other, in the Foley's, in the, in the rapid rhino please? Yeah. So we should inflate the rapid rhino. And then can you cut a piece of gauze to show yeah. how we would bring the gauze over from there to the presses and show us how you cut that here. Okay. okay. So you take a piece of gauze and you fold it once and you fold it twice. Okay, so it forms a square. And then all you need to do is cut a small aperture in the corner of it. And what you can do if you want to is you can make a little cut to the side like so, and that is just going to rock around the nasal part of the nasal alar there. Now that is how you do it. How you can get a piece, and you can then take a piece of tape, take a piece of tape, and you simply secure it in place. So you can secure it either on the nose or on the upper lip, and then you can secure your rapid rhino in place and separately and I prefer to hook it behind the ear because I think it's very much more comfortable for patients you can take this 
and take it behind where the ear would be and tape it behind the ear out of their way. What you want to make sure is there's not too much pressure pulling the nose out to the side, but that piece of gauze is there firstly to prevent the pressure from the umbilical clamp being over there, because remember, you remember that pressure equals force over area, and we're increasing the area, so therefore the pressure will reduce.